your poo, Linda. Your poo is going to be very good biochar. Thank you for donating it. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're saying. Oh, this is a clickbait. He ain't going to eat no dog poo. Yes, I am. I'm going to eat dog poo in this video. I guarantee you that I'll eat dog poo in this video. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some biochar. I'm going to make a potpourri of biochar with all kinds of different things, all kinds of different organic matter. I'm going to explain biochar. I'm going to do an actual course, walk you through a course on biochar. I'm going to do a bunch of different stuff. So hold on. Hey guys, make sure you click the subscribe button. It's on one of these sides. I always forget which side it's on. Click subscribe. And just to let you know, um, I don't know what day this video is going to be out, but I'm going to do, I owe two checks for a thousand dollars to you guys a thousand dollars a month we're on our last two months so i think i'm going to push it back a little bit um i'll give this video about seven days but if you go in the description below there's a link if you go to that link uh there's a thing that says sign up for email alerts sign up for the email alerts and we use that for a random number generator uh, we've already given away two or three checks, I forget, so I still have more checks to do. And I was at the beach doing the beach house renovation, so I couldn't do last month's check. Anyways, uh, anything I'm talking about in the description below, I'll also link to Humichar, I'll link to the Dirt Booster, I'll link to PGF Complete, anything I'm talking about. But today, this has the potential to be the world's most boring video, simply because I'm going to do a class on biochar, humichar, humic acid, we're going to talk about how answer common questions that you guys have given to us. So I'm going to go inside and I'm going to sit down and just relax. And we're going to talk about biochar. We're going to talk about humic acid. We're going to talk about, sorry, that's dog poo in my mouth, by the way. <laughs> we're going to talk about a few different things. But also to help spice it up a little bit right away, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you, I'll start the biochar potpourri that um, I'm going to do. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you the results of it. Morning. So this has the potential to be the most boring video ever, but I'm going to spice it up. Let me show you what I'm going to do today. I'm actually going to cook up a batch of biochar. I've never done this. I'm cooking stuff I've never tried before. <laughs> We're going to see the results. So let me go right away up front and let me show you what I'm going to cook. Just some sticks I found in the yard pine cones, peanuts, this is chicken feed, this is um, just like two by fours split up. We've got chicken and we've got Linda's poo. Linda, you make beautiful poo poo. Beautiful. Why not? It's going to be boring if I don't do this. So here's what I've got. Uh, I've got a camp stove here. I've got a Dutch oven, propane. We are gonna fill this up. Now I put a small little, eh, about just over eighth of an inch hole at the top for gas venting. And we're gonna put that in here. We're gonna fire it up. We're gonna bring it up to about maybe 850 degrees, somewhere around there. We're gonna let it cook for, oh, probably a good three or four hours. Shut it off and we'll see what happens. I'll put that at the end of the video. Oh, with dog poo, chicken, and... That doesn't sound like Julia Child. So let me just go ahead and I'm going to put this stuff in and fire it up. I'm going to add some, I'm going to add some wood right here. A couple of pine cones over here. Take some sticks that I found around the yard. Put some sticks in there. Let's put the peanuts over in here. Put the chicken feed right in here. Pop it on off. We are going to put some chicken. Spray some chicken around. And Linda's little poo. Just gonna put that all in there. Hey guys, so it's raining outside. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna come inside and we're gonna have this discussion about biochar and this is a learning session, like I said. If you don't want to learn about biochar, if you don't want to learn about humichar and humic acids, if you don't want to learn about this, skip past this section and go see the final and go see the rest of the uh, biochar little experiment we did. But so many of you guys have asked questions um, and they're good questions too. And there's also a lot of, I would say, almost bad information out there about biochar. I figured I'd clear it up. Um, as an example, someone 
posted a comment one time on a video that said, if you don't pre-charge your biochar, it's actually going to have a negative effect on your lawn. And that's absolutely false. That's not true. That's not a true statement. And I'll explain why in this video. Now, why am I taking the time to do all this? You could literally spend the next four months, 24 hours a day, watching videos, reading studies that have been done over the past 40 years, even a lot of current high-end university studies um, on the effects of biochar inside agriculture. It's really kind of amazing. And basically what people are finding is that if you use it properly within crops and in agriculture, you'll have at least, a, I would say, about a 60% increase in your plant yields versus just using fertilizer alone. I read that actually last night in a university um, peer-reviewed study that they were doing, and I thought that was just a good summary. It's just adding biochar to your dirt, to your soil, will have that kind of result. That's why I'm spending the time on this. So let's start with number one. Number one. What is Humachar and what is Dirt Booster? Because I'm going to be talking about the two. Uh, two. What was it? About two years ago, I went to the Andersons. And the Andersons had a product called Humic DG. And Humic DG was humic acid put into the form of these DG particles. This is very important to understand. A DG particle is a small particle it's a patented delivery system that when it gets wet, you put it in a spreader and you spread it nice and evenly. Well, when it gets wet, it almost explodes into thousands of subparticles. So this little particle will explode. And let me put up a little clip of some of it in, in water. This is actually humichar is what I'm going to show you. So you put it into water and it actually almost immediately disintegrates, sort of explodes. And it's a fantastic delivery system. So that's a DG particle. And I went to Anderson's and I said, look, I said, I want you to create a product for us, for me and for us that combines the benefits of biochar and humic acid. So humichar is a mix, 50-50 approximately of humic acid and biochar put into the DG particle, which allows us to accomplish a few things. It allows us to use a lawn spreader to evenly apply it. It has a great delivery method and it's micronized to the point that it can actually penetrate from the top down into your soil. That's a huge point to understand because the majority of agricultural biochar is tilled into the soil. In other words, you're digging up the soil and putting the human char down in and you're trying to accomplish a certain percentage. Well, we can't do that with a lawn. So how do we get the benefits of biochar delivered into the lawn and actually get it down into the soil? It's, it's extremely hard. And that's why we micronize it into that form. Now it varies in size. There are some smaller sizes, there's some medium sizes, and there's a lot of micronized biochar in this. So that's what it is. So humichar is humic acid and biochar. I'll explain the difference between those two in just a second. First of all, it contains no nutrients. I actually show myself eating humichar. It's humic acid and biochar. There's no nutrients, there's no chemicals. So you can, you can literally, if you wanted to, get a truckload and put half an inch on your lawn and it's gonna have no burning effect. It's not gonna have any negative impact. Remember, you can put out humichar in your lawn or your gardens anytime with any other product you don't have to wait as often and as much as you want all we're trying to do is we're trying to raise the carbon levels in our soils you'll learn about that in a second what is dirt booster okay so last year we created these fantastic gardens vegetable gardens without using any fertilizers caveat we used a tiny bit of super juice when we did the activation process but that was minuscule amount as far as the bulk of nutrients and fertilizers that all came for that all came from the digestion of the organic matter that process that's where the chemicals that's where the nutrients came from and we had absolutely stunning results just like all these other agricultural people that are studying biochar do so 
I asked Andersons, and a lot of you guys were doing this program with me. Basically, we take humichar, we take an organic matter, we were using chicken feed, and then we take a microbial booster pack, and we make this super compost inside manure. Put it into our soils, and that's it. We don't use any fertilizers in our vegetable gardens with massive results, <laughs> huge yields. You can go to dirtbooster.com, and you can see the video. You see some of the videos and see some of the pictures on the results. The problem is, is you had to go out and source all these different projects, all these different products. So you had to go buy the human char, then you had to buy the organic matter, and you had to go order the, the microbial pack. So you guys said, hey, can you make this an all-in-one pack? So I, we've been working with the Andersons and we're coming out with an all-in-one package. And I think it's about 20 or 30 pounds. It's going to be a mix of humichar along with organic, clean organic material. And inside there will be a microbial pack. So you basically have everything you need to make super compost or even to, to put it directly into your garden soils. That'll be available on Amazon, I'm thinking probably late February. Again, you can go to dirtbooster.com. For our lawns, we use the humichar. Let's clear that up as we go forward. So first of all, uh, what is biochar? There's, there's two videos that you really need to watch. If you really want to see something cool, I put this up on, um, it's on the Humichar website somewhere, but in the description below, I'll link, to, I'll actually embed this video on that page. But it's um, In Search of El Dorado. Uh, it talks, it's a sort of a history channel um, showing how how the ancients thousands and thousands of years ago figured out how to take Amazon sandy clay soil that will not grow anything by the way the soil in the Amazon and how they sustain these huge populations through the use of adding organic matter and biochar charcoal it's a really cool discovery um, and that sort of led onto terra preta which is black earth means black earth and just the amazing properties. Now there's a there's a guy in there that quotes and he's like an 800% crop yield production. I mean it's 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 crazy stuff. The other video that's really cool. <laughs> uh, I mean you can see the crazy stuff. Uh, go to YouTube and Google uh, and put in the search results. Put uh, uh, feeding cows biochar. There's a guy in Australia that's been taking big tubs every single day mixing in molasses with biochar, feeding it to his cows. When his cows poo, they poo a mix of manure and biochar. The dung beetle then comes up, draws it down into the soil, and he hasn't used fertilizer since 2001. <laughs> it's crazy. It really is crazy. So let's talk about, first I'm going to talk about biochar. Um, actually, let me talk about the difference between humic acid and biochar. Humic acid. Humic acid. There's these big rotting pits of organic matter. They go to these pits, Leonardite. They dig it up and it's this black substance and it contains humix, humic and uh, fulvic acid. That's basically the two components of humic acid. The, the humic part of humic acid, actually consider that a soil conditioner. And what that does is that treats your soil and allows your soil to hold onto the nutrients. That's what we're trying to get to. It hold, makes your soil hold onto the nutrients so that when the rain falls, it doesn't leach out into the ground. So that's beneficial. That's why people have really been looking at humic acid. Again, it's, you will not see a stimulated response. We're working on improving the soil. The next part of humic acid is the fulvic acid, and I always refer to it as the Viagra for plants. It basically stimulates the roots and the overall intake of nutrients to the plant. So that's humic acid. Um, let's talk about the biochar part, what biochar is. Biochar lasts for centuries. Biochar will not go away. <laughs> it's pure carbon. So here's what I can do. I can take a piece of wood and what I do is I take that piece of wood and I put it into a chamber. Here, I'll use a glue stick. So this is my chamber. And inside this chamber, I've got organic material, regardless of what it is. I'm then going to take that chamber and I'm going to put that inside of a wood, inside of an, uh, an oven. And I'm going to superheat the outside of this. Well, what's going to happen? The same thing that's happening in our experiment out there. 
when you superheat organic matter, everything that's not carbon at some point will turn into a gas form. That gas form will then release and be burned off with the outside chamber and what comes out is almost smokeless. So when you have that biochar chamber system set up, you have an internal chamber that's deprived of oxygen, paralysis, no oxygen or very little oxygen, and then the outside chamber, which has the oxygen, which is actually burning off the gases. When you keep heating and keep heating, you reduce it down to pure carbon. So here is an actual piece of biochar, and you can see it almost looks glassy. See that? And that's because that's pure carbon. Well, when you heat it properly, and I think it's like 600 degrees Celsius, it's like 845 degrees Fahrenheit, um, there's also molecular things that go on that I'm going to call it electrostatically charges this, even though it's not the right term. That's what you will understand. It sort of charges this. And so it actually has a charge to it that will draw in things like nutrients and water. So if I take this biochar and if I put it into water, it's going to fizz. And why is it fizzing? It's because it's drawing in the water molecules and, ox and the water and the oxygen or air is leaving. That's why humichar fizzes, because it draws. Well, what else does it draw? It draws in nutrients. It draws in water. And it also is acts like a condominium. So it acts like a condominium for microbial activity. All right, so this is where the human mind starts to get a little bit messed up because we can't visualize in an electron microscope range. We, our brain has a hard time thinking that way. When you look at pure carbon like that, the internal structure of it is amazing. Microscopic, you blow it up and you see all these channels and all these holes and cellular structures. Well, what does that create? It creates a condominium for microbial activity. It creates a place for water to hide. It creates a place for nutrients to bond to it. And then it can also release all that to the soil and to the plants as needed. So I'll put up a picture of a piece of biochar under a super powerful micron microscope. And it's hard to understand, but this is what it looks like. So you're going to see billions and billions of these little chambers and holes and hiding places. Since carbon doesn't go away and stays in our soil for hundreds of years, it stays there and it holds the nutrients. So every time it rains, instead of leaching out, your nutrients are now inside this biochar. The microbes have a place to hide, so it also makes it available to the plant. That's why we reach our ultimate goal. And our ultimate goal is to have better quality soil and to and to use less fertilizers. Now, what I'm gonna show you a little bit later in the video is I'm gonna show you different forms of biochar. I'm gonna show you, uh, I put wood, pine cone, meat, plants. I put all kinds of different stuff to basically let you know that anything that's a life form is made up of carbon. I believe uh, animals are about 19% and plants are about 12%. So that means if you were to put 100 pounds of plant material into a chamber, you'd probably get about 12 pounds of pure yield if you did it correctly, roughly. So that's how biochar helps us and that's why we're using it. Now let's talk about size and the question has come up about the size of biochar well would it make sense for me to put this big chunk into my soil over here and my plant is sitting over here no what do i want to do i want to actually surround that plant with biochar in fact i'm going to have millions of little root fibers all around that plant I would like to have as much biochar spread out evenly around that root system as possible so Micronizing biochar, we have found, works really well. We've tested it. works really well in our gardens. There's only one exception where you might want to go a little bit larger, and that's if you have a garden in an area that is subject to drought, so especially like agricultural areas. Um, a little bit larger size, more grainy type biochar will actually hold water better. So if you have a real sandy soil and you're running into drought conditions, a little bit larger size might, might help you with your uh, water retention. So that is true. Um, so it, that's going to hold a lot of water. 
a, a tiny, tiny little teeny piece is not going to hold a lot. So if you have issues, but for us, most of us, we don't have to worry about that. We have a garden and we have a hose nearby. So I want to look at the most efficient form and what is going to give me the best coverage. And it's the smaller size biochar. Um, if you want to mix in a little bit larger with it, you can, but we did not do that. We simply use the smaller human char in our gardens. Two thumbs up works great. Now, let's talk about the conversion since it's only been used for decades in agriculture and introducing it into the lawn care has always been a problem. If I put this piece of biochar on my grass, it's going to sit there until I'm long gone off this earth. It's not going to move. It's not going to go into the soil. Make sense? In agriculture, we're tilling, so it goes immediately into the soil. When it comes to the lawn, it's just going to sit on that top layer. So we had to come up with a way, how do we get biochar into the soil of the lawn? How do we get it to penetrate? And we did that through the humichar, micronizing it. So when you look at humichar, I'll put up a video of it disintegrating a few particles, you'll see that there's small particles, even smaller particles, and then there's super micronized particles that actually allow the transport, the sub transport down into the soils. No other biochar can do that. I'm just telling you, unless you have it in a micronized form. Well, the problem is, is if you micronize biochar and you try and put it out, it's this big cloud mess, hence the DG particle. It all ties back in together. Size does matter when it comes to effectively getting it down into the soil in a lawn. Um, it has going, should I use a little bit larger um, biochar? Only in if you're going into a garden situation or agricultural situation and only if you're in a situation where you have to really worry about extreme drought conditions. And even then, you'd have to have a very high content of biochar for the water. I would say you'd have to be up probably around a good 10, 20% at least. Now we're going to talk about charging biochar. And this is where a lot of myths come up. If you... Take this piece of carbon, and it's a magnet, it's a sponge, it's going to draw in nutrients, it's going to draw in water, all that stuff, it's gonna draw. So if I take a bunch of this and I put it into my vegetable garden, what's gonna happen? It's going to draw nutrients away from my plants. That, that's, what, that's why this whole discussion has started. That is true. And what they found is that if you don't preload or precharge your biochar in year one, you see almost zero results. Matter of fact, maybe even a little bit of negative results. Hence the dirt booster. What we do is we take the biochar, we put it into cow manure, we add the microbial activity, and we add this really clean corn organic matter, and the pile starts to heat up. You'll see steam come out of that pile. The organic matter starts to break down. And when organic matter breaks down, take a fish like the old, like remember those school videos of the Indians burying a fish under the corn? <laughs> when you bury anything that's organic and it rots, it releases nutrients during that process. So, and so what happens in these piles that we make with a dirt booster is the biochar just preloads up with everything that's good. And then we take that super compost and we put it into our gardens and we mix it into our garden soil. So now we have this huge amount of microbial activity, lots of nutrients, everything that's good going on. And we take that, we put it into our gardens and we don't use any fertilizers. But we have to preload or precharge because we're subsurface embedding the biochar. So we're taking that biochar and immediately incorporating it anywhere from six to 24 inches down into our soil. We won't see it again. Difference comes up with your lawn. When you apply humichar to your lawn or biochar to your lawn, it's gonna sit on top of your lawn for a few days. Get some rain, get some rain, it's gonna slowly start to move down. And what's funny is I would say over a couple of weeks, you're only going to get maybe about half an inch of penetration. 
Well, my roots are 26 inches deep. So are all these root systems going to have a negative impact from this, this biochar? No, because it's only about half an inch. And I say you'll get maybe about an inch to inch and a half penetration per season. It's a slow process because we can't till up our lawns. Now, if you are tilling up your lawn, load it up. But we're not tilling up our lawns. So if this is working through the thatch layer, and if it's slowly working through the top layer of the soil, what else is there? We're putting out fertilizer. So our concentration of nutrients in our soil, if you look at the soil charts, they're going to be very high in that first inch of soil after you apply your your nutrients and then they're slowly going to work down and eventually after months and months and months start to leach through the soil well when we put down our humichar on a top application as it works down into the soil it's going to pick up nutrients and eventually slowly work down in it'll be preloaded what else is in the thatch layer a teaspoon of that upper thatch layer and dirt will have a billion soil microbes let me say that again a teaspoon of that upper soil in that thatch layer will have, in the, in the warm weather, will have a billion soil microbes. So as it works through this layer, it's going to also pick up microbes, it's going to pick up nutrients, and it's going to slowly work down. And it takes weeks and weeks to slowly work down. So our humichar biochar, top applied to a lawn, preloads itself. Let me say that again. When you apply humichar biochar to a lawn top surface and it slowly works down over the next few weeks, it's going to preload itself. It is not, there is absolutely no way, if you have a logical mind, to say that it's going to impact negatively my lawn roots, which are up to 20 inches deep. It's not going to happen. It will happen in a garden situation. So if I take a big amount of garden or biochar and dump it into a garden without preloading it, it's going to possibly have a negative effect. Someone put a put a comment on if you watch, uh, I think it was, oh, what was it? It was one of those Alaska shows on Discovery, and they were making biochar. The guy actually made some biochar. But here's the problem with it. They took the, this is, they took the biochar, they crushed it up, and then they sprinkled it around their plants. That really isn't doing any good. What you need to do is you need to somehow mix that. Now, if he had taken that and mixed that in with manure and let it sit with just manure, that would be fine. And then to put that deep into the soil and till into the soil. Now he's got two thumbs up. He gets an A plus for doing that. Just sprinkling it on top on his garden. Nah, I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him a D or C minus or D. Eventually it'll work in, they'll get it, but you really need to, if you have a vegetable garden, look at the, learn, go to the Dirt Booster, watch the Dirt Booster videos about how we incorporate that deep into the soil and preload it. If you're on a lawn, it's a different story. Um, so questions from you guys. When's the best time to apply um, humichar to a lawn? It really doesn't matter because it's such a slow process. Carbon lasts for, for let's just say, 500 years. It's going to last for 500 years. So you just keep adding it and adding it. We, I like to say if you can afford to do it, put it out every single month. Just keep adding it and adding it. Pretty soon you'll have this fantastic lawn with very little nutrients needed. Um, someone said, well, if I aerate, can is it a good time to put out humichar? Yeah, but... Um, when you do an aeration, there's such a small percentage of the soil that's opened up. But yes, you can do it. You can actually go ahead and after your aeration, you got the holes in the lawn, dump the heck out of some humichar on there and you'll, you'll get some deeper in there. Um, can I put out humichar with other stuff on my lawn? Absolutely. You can eat it. It has no impact. Um, we've done test strips on our lawn where we've actually gone out a two-foot wide section and turned it black with humichar. No negative impacts. And you can put it out with anything else. You don't have to wait. Oh, what other questions do I commonly get about humichar? Um, I get questions about spreader settings. It really doesn't matter. Just set it so that you can put it out over your whole... Like I said, put it as heavy as you want. Uh, the Dirt Booster, uh, when will it be available? It'll be available, um, like I said, on Amazon sometime in February. It's going to be pretty cool. So let's go out. Let's finish up this experiment, and I'll show you where we are. You can see we are just a-cooking. <laughs> and just so you know, I've got on safety glasses, 
I don't know. This pot could just explode for all I know. So it's really a dangerous, sometimes dangerous to make biochar when you're doing stupid stuff like this. So I'm just playing, but. All right, I'm at 859 degrees. All right, so basically I am breaking 800 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm just gonna let that sit there. We're gonna let it cook off. Any thing that is basically burning with low oxygen, it's gonna put off a lot of smoke and a lot of gases. And this is the primary chamber. Now, what would normally happen is this primary chamber would sit inside of a burning chamber surrounding it and all this smoke that you see would be burned off. So all those gases would actually burn and ignite inside that secondary chamber that surrounds this inner chamber, oxygen deprived chamber, and it burns all these gases off so you don't have this pollution coming up. And basically you'll see a lot of people with a double chamber with a chimney snack and it's just clear heat coming up. There's like almost nothing coming out of it. It's pretty cool. 9.02. So I've got her cranked and I don't see any smoke. It's still a little warm. It's about 110 degrees. So what I'm gonna do oh, now, that. that is so cool. And it's like skeletonized. So basically you can see everything in its original form. Let's take a closer look. So everything in its original form. So that's Linda's poo right there. You can see the peanuts, you can see the wood. You can see the uh, chicken feed, you can see the, you can see the pine cones and it sounds like glass sounds like glass. I'm gonna look at a peanut. Isn't this the coolest crap you've ever seen? Look at that. <laughs> peanut biochar. I want to take a piece of this wood and I've got a little zoom lens for my phone here. And I'm gonna try and get you a detailed close-up picture I don't want to disturb this just yet. <laughs> see how it looks like glass? Let's take a, see if we can take a picture of that close up. And then I'll put it on, uh, and then I'll put it on the video and you'll see, what you'll see is all the pores. There's only one way to test your biochar, and that's to taste it. <laughs> Tastes like all the other biochar. It's pure carbon. <laughs> let's taste a let's taste a pine cone. Ah, these are so delicate. These little, these little pine cone pellets, pella, petals. <coughs> it almost feels finer. Um, feels more powdery. Same taste. It's carbon. Now, I will say, a couple of the peanuts still had a little brown on them. So I'm curious. <clears throat> tastes the same. It all tastes the same because it's carbon. We've reduced everything in here down to pure carbon. Carbon is carbon. It all tastes the same. <laughs> God, I got charcoal in my mouth. So I told you it was nasty out here. Man, it's dark, it's rainy. Anyways, what is that, Doc? That, my friends, is a Verispectum grow light. 
I know all you dope dealers out there are looking at that going, man, I wish I had that. Um, LED grow lighting is a huge business now. And uh, we'll go into that just a little bit. But one of the reasons why I have that is because what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take some tomato plants from seed and we're going to do some experimentation. I've never tested the seed reaction of using this dirt booster uh, super compost to grow seeds and we'll compare plain soil versus soil with a dirt booster added in. That's one thing we're doing. What else we got coming up for you guys? Uh, I've got a tow behind sprayer coming. I've got a tow behind spreader coming. Um, we have got we were over here building new garden boxes. We're gonna double the size of our vegetable garden this year. Jess will be back. Uh, I think Heidi might come back and help us out. My son's gonna be helping this year. So we got a bunch of stuff going on. Anyways, don't forget, click subscribe. Uh, you don't wanna miss all the stuff we got coming on, but the main thing I wanted you to learn about today is the benefits of biochar. And it really is amazing. Feel free to spend the next few months reading on it because it'll take you that long. I'll talk to you later. Doc.